And here's why compound interest makes more sense. If I think about simple interest, okay, let's suppose we borrow money and uh, I'm going to pay it back all at once, okay, then it makes sense to have like a separate computation for interest. And when I pay it back, I pay back the amount plus interest, okay. But usually with bank accounts, you, you don't really plan on that. Like if you borrow a bunch of money for a car, you don't say, don't worry, I'll pay you back in five years, trust me. You make payments on it as you go, okay. Or if you're saving money in a bank, you don't tell them, oh, I'm going to save money for five years. And they say, okay, that's fine. We won't give you anything until the five years are up. You kind of want to see them give you the interest as you go. And if it's change, maybe, you know, you got to take money out at some point. Okay. So what we want to do is look at this idea of compound interest. And with compound interest, what, we, what we're really doing is just taking that interest and regularly adding it to the to the uh, balance as we go instead of waiting till the end. So that's really the only difference conceptually. And this idea of reinvestment, right? We we take our our bank account whether we're borrowing or saving, okay? We'll think about saving money for now, right? If I save money after 1 month, the bank says, "All right, we're going to give you interest." And what they do is they just add it directly into my account. Okay? So that's what the comp that's what's called compounding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to we're going to develop a math formula for compound interest, but then we're going to I'm going to show you a couple different ways to compute it. Here's kind of the idea. We'll look at this example. Let's suppose we deposit $1000 in a bank account. It offers 3% interest compounded monthly. And we want to look at how our money will grow. So, first of all, remember I, I said before that interest rates are typically given as an annual rate. Okay? And if we are looking at a bank, um, they would usually advertise that as like the APR that stands for annual percentage rate. Okay, so that just means that okay, that's the percentage rate that that you get per year. Okay, and since we're looking at month to month, we're just going to divide that by twelve. Okay, so if it's three percent annually, then it's three percent divided by twelve monthly. But you'll notice if I'm going to multiply or divide, I don't, I don't want to leave it as a percentage. Let's switch it to a decimal, and that way we don't have to worry about any funny business occurring later. Okay. So as a decimal, this is how much interest we're getting per month. Okay. So this is going to be our interest rate R. Okay. So in the first month, we've deposited $1,000. Our interest rate R is 0.0025. So if I want to compute how much interest, I can use my simple interest formula, I equals PRT. So here's my P, here's my R. And because I converted this to a monthly rate, okay, my time is just one month. So my units already match up. I don't need to worry about um, converting them over. Or another way to look at that is instead of thinking of this as simple interest and doing I equals PRT, we can just say, I'm just taking a percentage of how much money is in there, right? We're, we're kind of, we don't even need to really put in the time factor. It's already sort of built in, right? That we're saying, all right, well, I'm looking at one month. I just want to take a percentage of how much I have in that month, right? Okay. So I take my principal times the rate and we get $2.50. Okay. So if my interest amount is $2.50 and I started with $1,000, then at the end of the first month, we're going to have $1,002.50. Okay. So when we start the second month, we're not starting with $1,000 anymore. But the second month, we're starting with a little bit more, $1,000 uh, plus the 250 So when I want to compute how much interest we get, we take our $1,002.50, multiply it by our rate, and now you'll notice that I get slightly more interest than I did the first month. Not by much, but it's slightly more. And the reason that it's more is because I'm taking a percentage of a slightly larger balance. So for the end of the second month, right, I take my starting balance for that second month, I add the interest, $2.51, and now I have $1,005.01. So this is the amount at the end of month two. This is what makes compounding drastically different from simple interest. Because in simple interest, we say, okay, I'm just going to compute your interest once, and that's it. It doesn't matter how long you borrow the money. 
you'll get more money, right? You know, the interest will be more if the time is more, but you don't, you don't do anything with the interest until the end. The idea of compound interest is no, like we, we compute the interest every month, if it's compounded monthly or every quarter or every day, whatever the, whatever the time unit is that we agree upon, and, and we add the interest as we go. Okay. So we can compute a table for what compound interest looks like, right? So here was our month one that we talked about. We started with $1,000. We computed the interest, and so I add that interest on. And then we also computed month two. We said, okay, now I'm starting with the ending balance for month one. Okay, so this and this match. I get slightly more interest. I add that on. So that's my starting balance for month three. When I compute the interest, because of rounding, it actually comes out the same as month two. I add that on. Okay. Then starting with month four, that's big enough that my interest has gone up another penny. Right, I add that on. And so you'll see the interest kind of, the amount of interest that we add grows. So our balance is getting bigger. And the more time we go on, the faster it's getting bigger because we're adding more interest each month. Now, there's a pattern to how this goes up by. And I'm not going to go into the pattern too much, but maybe we'll just sort of highlight it and then, and then I'll give you a formula. If I look at my starting amount P after one month, okay, my ending amount was um, my ending amount A was P plus I. And the way that we computed the interest I was just taking P times the R. So if I were to factor that, I would get P times one plus R. And that's what I have here. This is the one plus R. And this part over here is the P. For the second month, I take that value that I had at the starting month and do the same thing, multiply it by one plus r. But I have this one plus r times one plus r times my original thousand, so it gets squared, right? For the third month, I take one, you know, my, my one plus r and multiply it by the value that I had at the end of the second month, okay? And again, doing a little algebra, we can see, oh, okay, I can pull out that one plus r. Okay, and that's, that's where this formula comes from. Now, remember that the R we had here, we converted to a monthly rate. And typically what we do when we're given an amount of interest is we're given an annual rate. So in our formula, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of build in the conversion to, for example, a monthly rate, okay? So here's what the compound interest formula looks like, um, and I wanna break it down a little bit. So A is the ending amount in the account or the future balance. P is the starting amount or the principal, that's why we call it P, okay? R is the interest rate as a decimal, and we're typically gonna have this as an annual rate. And if this is an annual rate, then T is gonna be the number of years, and N is gonna be the number of compounding periods per year. To give you an example, uh, if we're talking about monthly, then N is 12. If we're talking about daily, Right? If I want to compound interest every day, then there's 365 days in a year, usually. Okay, we'll just we'll, we'll ignore leap years for the purpose of this class. Right, keep things a little bit simple. Okay, if uh, we were talking about quarterly, right? We call them quarters because there's four of them. So what I want to do is I want to look at um, computing interest two different ways. I want to look at it doing this using formulas, and then also using your calculator. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that you weren't given one formula here, we were given two, and that's because we might want to find different things, okay? So if I start with a $1,000 balance in my account, and I wanna say, okay, how much is gonna be in there after 10 years, okay? I wanna find the ending amount, so then I would use you know, this formula here. But if instead I said, okay, I want to have $5,000, 10 years from now, how much do I need to put in my account right now? Then what I want to find is the starting amount. So then I would use this version of the formula. Now, these are really the same formula. They're just algebraically solved for either P or A, right? So if I wanted to take this formula and solve for P, I would just divide by all of this stuff. I would have A divided by this one plus R over N to the NT. And that's exactly what we have over here on the right, okay? So they're not really two different formulas, but 
when we're doing problems, right? I mean, it feels like two different forms.